danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. This time it's French Morocco, Port Leote to be exact, where the American section of the French base is being enlarged. But somewhere among the thousands of people in Port Leote, someone doesn't want the job finished. In the past month, construction has been slowed down due to a series of so-called accidents. The steps they take are rough. My job is to get over there and meet Benson, one of our agents, and between us, find out who's behind this sabotage and stop them. Hotel Agueda? Mr. Mitchell, please. Mr. Mitchell? Uh, no, sir. He has not yet arrived. When he arrives, please tell him that Mr. Benson is at 57 Rue Mezagan. 57 Rue Mezagan. All right, I'll tell him as the moment he comes. The phone number is 4623. 4623. I'll give it to him the moment he arrives. Yes, sir. May I help you? I'd like a room. Yes, of course. Uh, we have a very lovely suite on the second floor. I'll take it. Uh, has a very charming view of the city at will night. Will you quit pressing? You've made the sale. Yes, sir. If you will sign, please. Thank you. I'm certain you will like it, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, you know my name, huh? Uh, I merely assumed... Uh, see, you are Mr. Mitchell. Your signature says so. Yeah, but you knew it before I'd finished writing it. Oh, there was a telephone call for you a short time ago. Oh, from whom? Uh, a gentleman named Mr. Benson. He uh, said you were expected and he described you. Oh? Uh, here is a number for you to call. If you like, I will get it for you. Okay. Hello, 4623, please. You an American, sir? I am an American. I have a cousin there. Uh, he works in a sardine factory. Oh, that's nice work if you can stand it. Sir? No, oh, skip it. Uh, this cousin, he writes me that uh, his job there is to see that the sardines are so placed in the can that they all face one way. <laughs> he also writes... Hello? 4623? Yes? Mr. Mitchell calling Mr. Benson. 21. One moment. For you, sir. Thank you. Hello? Jim? Welcome to Port Leote. Just got in, just got your message. Well, they've been so close behind me, I had to change my address. Tell you about it when you get here. Okay, how far is it? It'll take you about five minutes. All right, I'll see you then. He's coming right over. Anything new on the fire this morning? No, not a thing. Started with a small incendiary explosion. Quarter of a million dollars went up in smoke. That is the first such fire this month. Henderson, you're in charge of the supplies at the base. Did security double the guard? Huh, doubled it and tripled it. But they still get in and plant their stuff. Beats me. My police patrol outside the base 24 hours each day. They come and go like shadows. Well, I'd like to stay and meet Mitchell, but I gotta go and check on a missing truck driver of mine. Did you report his absence to my office? Well, not yet, but if I don't run him down this afternoon, I'll report him to missing persons. Look, if you get anything hot, give me a ring. Right. If he finds anything, as you say, hot, it will probably be another of your warehouses burning. The Rue Mazagan is a noisy, crooked little side street near the waterfront. It's jammed with donkey carts and a few tourists and a swarm of peddlers. As I walk along looking for number 57, one of the peddlers darts up to me, flashing a big grin. Yes, Andy. Pause and examine the treasures I have for you. Thanks, but no thanks. Here are knives fashioned by the finest craftsmen. Yeah, well, when I need one, I'll look you up. Observe. This fine throwing knife from Damascus. Its heft is perfect, its balance superb. No doubt about it. With this, an expert can split a melon at 50 paces. Well, I'm no expert, so I'll stick to a melon fork. See how its ivory handle fits the palm of the hand. <laughs> Peddler was right, Steve. This is a beautiful throwing knife. Wait. With it, an expert could split a melon at 50 paces. 
Yeah, and at close range, he could do a good job on your gizzard. Why did you not turn over this man to my police? <laughs> you think he'd have told who hired him? No, monsieur. But uh, he was probably after your money. Uh, I don't think he was after my money. Well, I'll have my men investigate, but I'm afraid it's hopeless. Probably to you, all peddlers look alike. You think it ties in with this sabotage deal, don't you, Steve? Well, if that happens to me again, Benson, the answer is definitely yes. Guess you saw the smoke rising from the fire at the airfield. Yeah, when I flew in. Henderson had to pull every available man off of construction to fight it. Lost hundreds of man hours. Who's Henderson? He's in charge of construction of the base. You know him well? Known him for years. He's as clean as a pin. He'd be here now, but he had to check up on one of his men. That fire could have been much worse, Monsieur Mitchell. Yes. If the blaze had reached those big gas tanks, it'd have been goodbye base. Uh, so far, how close have you come to whoever's behind this whole deal? Mighty close. So close that uh, night before last, they tried to kill him. Hmm? I did get a, get a dunking in the harbor. In the harbor? Oh, I was nosing around the waterfront. Someone sneaked ah. up behind me and clouded me. Then they tried to finish me off with a knife. Next thing I knew, I was in the water. <laughs> One of my men heard the noise and went to investigate. The would-be killer had fled. It's a good thing he did or there'd be no more Benson. But they're on to me now, Steve. That's why I'm on my way back to the States. From here on in, it's in your lap. Well, so far, what have you picked up on him? That's just it. I haven't got a thing. Well, then, why would they risk moving in on you? Because I either know more than I think I know, or they think I know more than I think I do. Come again? <laughs> Steve, ever hear of Vilok? Vilok? <laughs> yeah, isn't he that international Joe for hire, no job too little or too big? We have a copy of the police dossier on Aristide Vilok. Any pictures? No. We have no idea what he looks like. Chiefly because, well, no one has ever lived to describe him. <laughs> oh, fine. I've been on the trail of this boy for a long time, Steve. Wherever there's trouble, there's Vilok. Palestine, Jordan, Greece, Turkey. Wait a minute. Yeah. What are you driving at, Steve? You must have been pretty close on his trail or he wouldn't have risked an attempt on you. Could be. That means that he won't rest until he's sure you're polished off. So? So, instead of breaking our backs trying to find this gent, why not let him find you? That newspaper story does the trick. Oh, have no fear, Mitchell. By now, all of Port Jose knows that the body of an unidentified man was found floating in a bay. Well, then one of our visitors should be Vlock. Yes, but uh, which one? <laughs> Probably the one we least suspect. <laughs> Where is he, attendant? There he is, a little guy. Ah, uh, uh, attendant? Uh, good day, messieurs. What can I do for you? I'm Captain Laborde. At your service, Captain. How long have you been on duty? I've just arrived, monsieur. Oh, then you do not know if there have been any persons seeking to identify the body of the man we found in the bay? No, monsieur, I do not know which body that would be. Well, you probably will when you look at your records. Uh, will that be all? Oh, you may go, thank you. If you need me, I will be at the rear. Merci. All right. We may as well make ourselves comfortable, huh? Yeah, all we can do now is wait. Maybe a long one. Time is it, Mitchell? 9.30. When would think somebody would have turned up by now? Nah, maybe my little gag wasn't so hot.
I just came in the front door. I might be recognized, so I'll duck. Are you in charge here? Oui, mademoiselle. What can I do for you? A man was found in the harbor. That is correct. I'm Jeanne Moliere. I'm looking for my fiancé. He disappeared three days ago. I didn't hear the word, and I thought perhaps he... His name? Charles Hammett. He's tall, broad shoulders with blonde hairs. His eyes are blue. No, the body of the man we found in the harbor does not answer that description. Are you certain? Quite. I hope this is good news for you, mademoiselle. Oh, yes. I didn't really believe that he was dead. <laughs> it is, that is not like him to live without a word, and I... Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. What do you think, Captain? Oh, shattered romance, nothing more. <laughs> you sound pretty positive. Well, I've seen the girl before. Uh, Jeanne Moura is a dancer at the uh, Café du Chien d'Or. Have you ever heard of this Charles Hammett? No. But there are many Americans in Poliote these days, especially at the base. You know, Captain, a thought just occurred to me. Suppose Vilak is a woman. It is a possibility. Gina's in a good spot to get a lot of information about the base. Yes. Good evening, gentlemen. Who are you? Emilio Ruiz of Lisbon, private investigator. My card. Didn't hear you come in. I entered as the young lady was leaving. Nor did we hear your approach. <laughs> I did not want to disturb you. Has the body been identified yet? May I ask your interest in the matter? Allow me to explain. I am employed by a certain lady in Lisbon. Her husband left her some time ago after a violent quarrel. I see. He was last seen in Tangiers a month ago in the company of a young lady. Not a word of him since. My client, of course, is very sad. She loved him deeply. And besides, when he left, he took all her jewels. You think the body could have been your client's husband? If I may review the remains. Oh, that's impossible. Oh? Yes, the body is no longer there. A relative has claimed it. I see. So it could hardly be your client's husband, could it? No, of course not. Mm. But perhaps if I could see the other remains. No, they are all known to us. They could not be the man you seek. I think I'll take a little walk. You want to come along? No, I'd better stay here. I'll call up the base and check on Charles Hammett. Yeah. Hello? Hello, uh, donnez-moi la base. I only wanted to talk with the young lady. Yeah, do you have to push her in the doorway to do that? I have nothing to say to this man. Mademoiselle, I, I only wanted to ask you about my client's husband. What's the matter, Ruiz? Didn't you believe us back there at the morgue? You said a relative had identified the body. I realized it must have been this woman who was leaving as I entered. And I, it occurred to me that it might have been my client's husband after all. So you followed her? I identified nobody at the morgue. I was looking for my boyfriend. Huh? Wait a minute. Here, here is his picture. Oh, I'm very sorry, this is not the man. Just a minute, Miss Molier. Monsieur, you have been most kind, but now I'm late for my appearance. Wait a minute, I'd like to take another look at that picture of that boyfriend of yours. Why are you so interested in Charles? Oh, just curious. I used to know a fellow by that name. Not him.
Mitchell. The board. I was looking for you when this... Yeah, do you always go looking for people with a gun in your hand? Oh, you do not understand. Uh, nor do I, and I don't intend to remain here to hear about. I'm um, late. Sorry, startled you. Good night, gentlemen. Mitchell, come with me. He was preparing to split the melon at 50 paces. Well, you can call off your men, Laborde. You found your peddler. The one we attacked you this morning? Yeah. Looks like he was trying for a repeat performance. I'll send a man to pick up the body. Hmm. Why were you following me? Right after you left, Henderson arrived. I wanted you to meet him. Henderson? Why was he interested in the body? Oh, he said a man uh, of his employment was missing. Hmm. Where is he now? Uh, waiting at the morgue. What was that? Oh, the bell. Another inmate has arrived. Inmate? Yes. Look, I'm looking for one of my men. Well, you've probably come to the right place, monsieur. Uh, pardon me. I do not know, monsieur. No identification on him? None. Where'd you find him? Less than a block away. Now, if you will excuse me, monsieur, I must go to the police station and make my report. Would you like to see him, monsieur? Perhaps he is the man you're looking for. Okay, we might as well. Where's the body? Over there. Well, monsieur? Yeah, that's my man. Will he be leaving? No, I'm gonna wait for Captain Laborde. You can wait for him in the office. Thanks. Mr. Henderson, this is Steve Mitchell. <laughs> Glad to know you, Henderson. Well, the same here. I understand one of your men is missing. Not anymore. Huh? You mean uh, he is here? Yeah, the ambulance driver and the attendant brought him in a few minutes after you left. Are you sure it's your man? Yeah, it's my truck driver. Where is the, this ambulance driver now? Well, he went to the police station to report the murder. I'll go and question him. Where's the attendant? He was around here just a minute ago. Anybody else here at the time? No, just the ambulance driver, the attendant, myself. Mm -hmm. Well, somehow... Hey. Uh, yeah, it looks like blood. But they brought my uh, driver here not long ago. No, no. That's something that happened right here. A lot of drops leading that way. Yeah, right through that door. Stabbed to death. Yeah. What I don't get is, why would he get killed in here? Would you know him? No. How about you? Huh. Murder in the morgue? Well, does it tie into the fact that Benson's body is supposed to be here? How did you know that, Henderson? Laborde told me. Oh, wait a minute, Mitchell. 
Skip it. Yeah, let's not skip it. I was here alone, I'll admit it. But I didn't kill this man. I didn't say you did. Well, don't. I've got as much at stake in the sabotage thing as you have. If I don't come up with an answer, they'll send somebody to take my place. What's your idea, Henderson? Well, I don't know. If this man was killed here, the man that did it didn't have much time to empty his pockets. Mm. Pierre Ducas. That mean anything to you? No. Occupation. Hey, maybe we've got something. Morgue attendant. Wait a minute. This isn't the bird that Laborde and I talked with when we came in here first. I don't get it. That's the real attendant. That first one was a phony. Well, then who was the phony? Who do you think? The little guy that nobody ever lived to describe. v -Lock? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't make sense, Mitchell. v -Lock wouldn't have stayed around here after he found out Benson wasn't really dead. Put it together this way. v -Lock read that story we put in the papers. He came here to check up on it. The attendant got suspicious and started to phone the police, as he'd been told to do. And v -Lock kills him? Yeah. And he hears Laborde and I coming in. Before he has a chance to make his investigation, he jumps into the attendant's uniform. Well, why didn't he make his search and leave? Because he heard Laborde and I talking. He realized we'd set a trap for him. So he stuck around to figure out just how much we did know. Henderson, what kind of identification did your driver use to get through your guards? Oh, a regular security badge. The kind with a picture on it? No, just had some numbers. But everybody at the base knew him very well. Let's take a look at it. It's gone. Yeah, v has got it. He's got an open sesame to the whole base. Well, I'll get on the phone and cancel that badge. What is your hurry, gentlemen? You thought I would be at the base, and indeed I would be. Except the base will wait for me. You would not. Pretty cagey, v -Lock. Exactly. You see, to complete my work, I must remain v -Lock, The man no one has lived to describe. Stop where you are. I'm taking no chances with you. Twice you escaped, thanks to the stupidity of the peddler. But I assure you, I am not stupid. You're still not in the clear, Vilak. Laborde saw you, too. He'll figure out something. No, nah, Mitchell. You are going to call him and ask him to meet you here. Sorry. No sale. Well, I don't have much time. You think I'm going to ask Laborde to walk right into a bullet? You're all wet. Very well. Mr. Henderson, you will call. Mitchell gave you my answer. I'm sorry, Henderson. You forced me to change my plans. All right, Mitchell. You want to play hide and seek? Sure. I'm fine. How's Henderson? Mitchell, what happened? <laughs> There's your prize package. All signed and sealed for delivery. v -Lock. This is v -Lock? Yeah. v -Lock the saboteur. Maybe I should say the ex-saboteur. The man that nobody ever lived to describe. Somehow or other, I've got a hunch that a lot of people are going to get to know him, but like him, they'll all be wearing numbers. Mm -hmm.